Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10 is your home for high school baseball and softball. The pitch from four, lined in the left field, that's down for a base hit. French is rounding third, and the Eagles walk it off and win the Region 2 Section 1 Championship over Musselman on the Lane to Water walk-off single. Join us all season long for coverage of every EPAC team right here on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. In this segment, we will meet the candidates for the Berkeley County Board of Education. We have two incumbents and one challenger. They are Melissa Power. Melissa, thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Michael having Martin. Us. Michael. Thank you. And James Schumann. James, thank, thank you, you for being here as well. Uh, each of you will get two minutes uh, maximum for an opening statement. Then we'll rotate back around for the same amount of time for a closing statement. Uh, Bill Stubblefield and John Gilstrap will be asking you questions during the course of this. And... If uh, anybody's name is invoked by the other during a response, you have the option of a direct response. At the conclusion of that person's statement, please raise your hand and let us know that you'd like to respond, and then we'll acknowledge you and give you the time. If you feel like a question is uh, something that needs a bit more depth and you need more than about two minutes for an answer, uh, let us know in advance. You might need that. We'll do our best to accommodate your request to provide that extra time. Now, we'll start with our first question, and that will go to Mr. – oh, I'm sorry, before we go to questions, opening statements, and we'll start with you, Melissa Power, one of the incumbents. Thank you, uh, Rob, for having me here this morning. Um, two years ago, I had the pleasure of being elected uh, into office for the remaining portion of Dr. Queen's uh, previously elected position on the Board of Education, and so now, two years later, here I am running again for a four-year term. In the last two years, we've been able to accomplish many things um, on the Board of Education, one of which is improved transparency. We are actively in the schools. One of the things that we hear a lot on our Board of Education is that all five members are actively engaged with all the schools, and we are, we are visibly seen and approachable. Um, and I take great pride in that because one of the best things that we can do is actually speak with and interact with those that are in the classrooms, those who are working with directly with our students. Another accomplishment I feel that I've made is I helped provide some better clarity upon the, the bond project that we had. Um, with my previous experience in construction, I was able to look and review uh, some of the numbers and uh, information given and I was able to ask the appropriate questions in order to get us a more accurate number and a more accurate accountability for the projects that were was enrolled with that um, various other items that came up is I have helped improve um, staff morale at at least um, one particular school where there were some issues that were happening I was approached and I brought the, that information um, front and center to Superintendent Stevens and uh, he has been working uh, with his staff with that particular school and and the school morale is, is improving um, I don't want to necessarily say the name of that school because I don't want to put a glaring light on them but they things are improving so it's not just one avenue that I'm looking at it's a multifaceted avenue and so I would appreciate your vote again on May 14th thank you Melissa Power and uh, Michael Martin Good morning everyone thank you TV 10 and WRNR for hosting today's debate uh, my name is Michael Martin I'm running for re-election for my seat on the Berkeley County Board of Education I was raised here in Berkeley County I was in 4-H for seven years raising hogs for the county fair I attended Berkeley County Schools for 13 years. I graduated Muskegon High School in 2015, and I went on to WVU studying agricultural business and natural resources policy. Um, my professional career, I have commuted to D.C. working for many different trade associations in different trade areas, and I work in the tourism industry in Harpers Ferry. And I was first elected in 2020 graciously by the voters of Berkeley County. And I proudly served the last three and a half years and am seeking another term to continue the great work that we are doing. We passed the largest bond in West Virginia history and the trust in us to receive another $25 million from the West Virginia um, School Building Authority. And our bright days are ahead of us and we all need to work together to get things done for the future of our state and our county. I fought for accountability and transparency since being on the board and I want to see our district to continue that. I live here in Berkeley County. I want to stay here in Berkeley County and do the best I can for the best of the state for the future of our kids. Thank you, Michael Martin and James Human. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is James Human, 
You can find out more information about my candidacy for school board on Facebook at James Human for School Board. I have lived in Back Creek Valley for the last 22 years and in Berkeley County for the last 33 years. I have a business degree from Shepherd College and I have worked at Quad Graphics for the last 25 years. Before that, I ran restaurants in the area. For the last 17 years, I've been with the Scouts BSA in multiple positions, including Cub Master for Pac-37 from Hedgesville. For the last six years, I have been married to my wife, Lorenda, for the last 23 years, and we are raising four boys who have all attended Berkeley County Schools. And she is a first grade aide at Hedgesville Elementary School. Thank you. Thank you, James. Now with our first question, John Gilstrap. Actually, Bill's still the Bill, yeah. oh, Bill's yeah. back to take the question. Yeah, I'm back, yeah. Uh, in multiple surveys, teachers have listed discipline issues and administrative burdens as been among their greatest job frustrations. As a board member, what can you do to address these, these issues? And Mr. Martin, I'll start with you. So there's many different avenues you can look for the discipline issue. Uh, you can at the state level and also look at the county level with our local policy. Uh, we are so close to passing a discipline bill in the legislature, and I hope we can do uh, next time. But really, for discipline, I believe it starts in the home, and a lot of the issues are with parents. Um, Excuse me a second. The question is, what can you as a board member do? What can I as a board member do? Um, to enact a ecosystem for our community to want to be engaged in our school system, um, empower our principals, empower our teachers, uh, to be able to give them the tools, um, whether it be funds, grants, things like that, to give them the tools to be able to um, make those uh, tough conversations with parents and want, wanting parents to be in, um, wanting to come to teacher conferences and things like that. Okay, thank you. Mr. Human? Uh, I believe that uh, uh, giving control back to the administrators and the teachers would be the biggest help with discipline. Uh, right now they have set rules that are mandated by the legislature and that makes it very difficult to actually enforce things. Uh, you have students that are uh, expelled or suspended for minor infractions because the way the rules are written and the administration has no leeway. So I believe that uh, getting the power back to the school personnel would actually be the biggest help for that. Ms. Power? So one of the things that I ran on last time was school behavior um, with, with students specifically. And one of the things that we actually did back in the summer um, of 2023 as a board, we approved, we took money out of our savings uh, budget budgeting item and we approved for three school safety officers to be hired and to be implemented. Our desire is to put that in every single school. We believe that the placements of those individuals will assist our teachers and our administrative staff in dealing with some of the extreme behaviors. If you talk to different principals, you will hear that two or three students within their school are the are the individuals that do a lot of the distractions. And so we're hearing that and we're implementing some changes. Uh, one of the other things that we do, we had a pilot program that we have at Tuscarora Elementary School where we are actually um, working with uh, staff to help with some of those extreme behaviors in our elementary population. And that actually has, is turning out to be a, a well needed, it is a, it is a needed um, um, program, but also it is actually functioning very, very well. And it, it's similar to, but it is not um, what we would have for our um, school that we have in the evenings, the transition school. Um, it is similar, but not the same, because it's geared to elementary students. Mr. Gilstrap. All right, <clears throat> we'll start with Mr. Human. Uh, who should be in charge of what books get put into school libraries, and to what degree should parents be involved in the selection of individual books? Uh, I, I do not believe in censorship, and I think that uh, in the school libraries, that any book should be available. Uh, if it's uh, something of mature content or something, it should be in a separate section, and it should be known what it is, so that uh, if somebody didn't want to read that, they wouldn't have to read that. I totally support that uh, anybody can read anything they want, 
but I do not think anybody else should tell anyone what they should read. All right, Ms. Power? So it's interesting. We have a little bit of a blend in, in that particular answer. Um, I'm going to try and get it in the allotted time. We currently have our public school um, library that, that actually exists inside uh, one of our public schools. So there's a multifaceted approach that goes to that. I am in agreement with Mr. Human when it comes to separating out the books with mature content. My other belief is that, and I have not necessarily seen this, but we shouldn't have 12th grade reading material in a fifth grade class. <laughs> um, however, at the same time, if we have an excelling student, we need to provide those resources to that excelling student who is reading on a much higher grade level than maybe fifth grade or sixth grade. We also need to involve parental um, awareness, I believe, in our schools. I believe that parental awareness goes a long way. And I think that there would be more support from parents if they understood some of the processes that we go through. But at the same time, I think that the school system would also have advantages to listening to the parents as well. And I'm not saying that we don't, and I'm not saying that parents aren't listening. I'm just saying that we need to continue having those open and honest conversations and putting out all those cards on the table. All right, Michael Martin. Mr. Martin. So that's a great question. Um, great points from Mr. Human and Ms. Power. Um, a lot of it comes down to what the students want to read. And I believe we should not have censorship, but also parent involvement, um, depending on the classroom. Like 9 through 12 definitely have AP style content um, advanced placement for um, those students that want to take those classes. And we should not um, inhibit any student to be able to not read a book if it does have mature content, but if it's on the AP exam, um, things like that. So there is a fine line of um, books that Ms. Power did point to that should not be in the intermediate levels versus the high school levels. And it's pretty, um, it's a pretty gray area if it is um, the board's decision to, um, if a book does come challenge to us, we decide um, that as well as the superintendent's recommendation for that. Bill? For the nature of this question, I wanted to ask uh, Ms. Power first, uh, what is the most glaring opportunity lost during the last two years? Hmm. I want to make sure that I'm understanding your question because I'm, as I'm thinking about it, I have a few different areas, I'm, I'm, avenues I'm going down. I, I believe your question is is geared to what what have we lost in the last two years? What what opportunity could, should could we have taken advantage of that ah. we did not? I think that one of the areas I, that I fully have advocated for on the school board um, since our. Um, technical difficulties that we had in the uh, school year of 2022-2023. Uh, um, the hack saw, now. Yeah, or so, okay, yeah. Right. Yeah. Some of the things that we saw during that time period was that there were some students who weren't necessarily excelling by using all technical materials. And we saw them st starting to make gains when it came to paper and pencil. I would assert that we need to have a, per, a blend of both tech materials as well as textbooks and paper with pencils. There are a lot of teachers that um, utilize that already, but there are some areas where I think we can see improvements if we do the blend, because then we can capture more of those individuals who are not necessarily learning from, a, from that you know, everything's on the iPad and everything is, is, is in that arena. Um, that is my uh, personal belief that I think that was an opportunity we missed in the last year as we were addressing some of the technical issues. Mr. Martin. Uh, same point, but I'll, I'll go a different way. Um, definitely communication from the board office down to the school level, um, whether it's been different in instances, whether it's like false alarms, things like that. Um, how fast it's getting out to the parents can be improved and we now have a new communications coordinator so hopefully the, we're addressing this and um, be able to get us back on the right track but especially with um, the attack that we did have there's a lot of gray areas that we can't say 
um, whether information has come from the FBI telling us not to say one thing or another. Um, but it's also saying what we can say in a, um, in a timely manner. Thank you. Mr. Human? Uh, I think they could have uh, do better with communication to the families and parents. I have four kids in the school system, and school, the Schoology app is not very friendly to use. Uh, so there's some opportunity missed there. Anything else you wanted to elaborate on, or is that That's it? That's all. All right. John? <clears throat> if we w ma wave a magic wand and you're elected, you're in office, you can achieve one thing. You know, you get your one dream. That's it. You get the one dream that you accomplish. What's it going to be? We'll start with Mr. Human. Uh, I would work with the legislature to get locality pay in West Virginia. That is desperately needed, not just for teachers and staff, but for uh, the Department of Health and Human Resources and uh, the police. All right. I mean, I, I think all of us are probably going to say locality pay, <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll gear off to slowing down the growth in our county. Uh, we see it on our roads for our school buses, for parents getting in and dropping their kids off uh, in and out of the schools. Um, Would speeding up the, the, the construction of infrastructure in more schools accomplish the same goal? Or yeah, road infrastructure first. Well, slow down the population growth, slow down the payment in lieu of tax programs that we have. Um, that, that we have a PNG, Macy's, great for our county, but our schools are struggling. Okay. Our enrollment, our enrollment numbers are up. Um, we don't get that funding for a year, so we're always, always a year behind, getting, <laughs> always trying to catch back up. You know, two years ago, I was one of the most controversial candidates that was running. Um, you're you're I, calm now. I'm <laughs> calm. You know, and I've learned a few things, and that's one of the things that I've, I've based my campaign on. You know, I, I, the last time I was on your show, uh, a couple weeks ago, we had a very interesting conversation with the three of you um, where I brought some things to light about Senator Blair that I did not, I, I as a person on the board or candidate, was not appreciative of. Since then, I have had one conversation with Senator Blair, and I could, would like to continue to do that. He would as well. One of the things that I've learned over the last two years is, is, to, is to sit down and have a conversation. I can talk to your face just as much as I can talk behind your back. And I talked, quote, behind his back. He wasn't in the room a few weeks ago. But at the same time, exactly what I said on that radio station is, was exactly what I said to him. And I think we need to have a conversation, all of us sitting down at the table, putting aside our differences, putting aside how we personally feel about somebody, whether it's a candidate or a personality or whatever, and having a conversation. We need to have legislators, parents, teachers, administrators, school board officials, police officers, all, we need to have everybody sitting at the table and talking to each other and not at each other. Because it, while we're still talking at each other, the people that lose every single time is the students. So. If there's one thing I would love to have that I could wave my magic wand on is to have everybody sit at the table and not come in with bias, but come in and sit down and listen to what the other person is telling you and not answer with what you want to say, but actually respond to that person and hearing what they are actually saying and the perspective that they have. And we are just about out of time. So before we move to closing statements, I want to follow up very quickly on locality pay, only because... Uh, recently on the show, when we've discussed it, we've gotten uh, with candidates, we've gotten pushback from members of our audience who have said it's an isolated incident. It's not really that important to the people of the Eastern Panhandle, seemingly just on this show. You are involved with teachers. Mr. Human, you're a parent who mentioned you would like to do locality pay as your single biggest wish. Uh, give me 30 seconds. Is, is locality pay overrated in this area, or do you regard it as one of the most important things out there? It is absolutely one of the most important things, especially if we're not going to be addressing the school aid formula. If we're not going to address the school aid formula, we're over, we're over capacity. We don't get, we have, to, we have to find money in our operating budget to continually supplement our teachers' uh, salaries, our teacher aid salaries. I, and we have to do that in form of levies. 
because we just don't have enough money coming in. Um, I'd love to address the locality pay because that would help address a lot of the issues that we're, that we're facing, but it wouldn't address all of them. Um, definitely, it, it, is, it is more important than what we might think. Michael Martin. So as a young person, I, I still can't. We all envy you here at this yeah, table. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't even afford a house in this area. I'm still with my parents. So I understand our, our teachers that are coming straight out of high school. I'm going to start, wow, straight out of college uh, with student debts, trying to start a family here. Um, a townhouse is going for $300,000. With these interest rates, this is not going to happen. So we have at the federal level, we need to have at the state level when it comes to locality pay for teachers and service personnel because it's, it's sad to see what we have to pay our service personnel. And Ms. Power did touch on it, the levy, it supplements what we do, what the state does give us. Um, so we do need to pass that as well on May 14th. Mr. Human. Uh, yes, we definitely need the locality pay. Uh, right now in Frederick County, Virginia, uh, they start at $50,000 for a first year teacher. And in Berkeley County, it's 45000 And that 5000 of that is from the extra that comes from the, uh, the levy. Levy, yes. And yeah, you just can't get people to work when the, the cost of living around here is so high. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate uh, all of your time. We're going to move to closing statements now. Michael, I'm going to begin with you. Michael Martin, closing statement. Thank you, TV10 again, uh, WRNR, uh, Rob, Bill, and John. Thank you for the questions. Um, it's important that uh, we learn about the issues right here in our backyard. Um, I am transparent, accountable, fiscally uh, responsible and wanting to work with everyone on the Board of Education. Everyone deserves a seat at, seat at the table. I will continue to support our teachers, service personnel, students, and parents. I will never be a rubber stamp and continue, um, and can continue that current board, can guarantee the current board is not a rubber stamp. We need school board members to actually show up. There's one candidate that's not here right now and has not been the last four forms in our community as well and who will sh uh, show up and stand up for all students in Berkeley County. So please vote for myself, Michael Martin, for the Berkeley County Board of Education and the Berkeley County um, School Levy on May 14th. You can learn more about me on my website, michaelmartinwv.com. I look forward to working um, with everyone in the community for a betterment of our school district. Thank you. James Human. I'm James Human for School Board at Facebook.com. If you'd like some more information about me, I encourage everyone to vote starting May 1st. There will be three early voting sites this year, so with two weeks to vote, there is no excuse for only 23% of the eligible voters voting. That was the statewide turnout on the last primary election. So two out of three people are letting someone else decide how they will be governed. The primary is the final election for nonpartisan positions, which include the school board, judges, and magistrates. The school levy is also being voted on this May. Berkeley County voters have renewed this levy for the last 75 years. It is not a new tax, it is a continuation of the tax, and 100% of it stays in Berkeley County. Please vote yes for the levy and vote for James Ewan. Thank you. Melissa Power. So I'm going to go back to exactly what I've said before. I have been a very transparent individual. I will continue to be that over the next four years. While I was viewed as controversial four years ago, or two years ago, uh, this year, I am definitely not in that same light. However, at the same time, I am one of the individuals who listens. I listen to what teachers are saying, what parents are saying, what students are saying, and what our administration is saying. And we need to be able to do more listening than we do talking. And while I constantly am the one that likes to talk at our board <laughs> meetings, I do listen. And one of the, the things that I can tell you moving forward is that I'm going to continue to learn and grow, not just as a school board member, but as an, as an individual. And I have been able to evidence that in real life right in front of you for the last two years. And you, if you want to find out more information, powerforboe.com, P-O-W-E-R-F-O-R-B-O-E.com. Melissa Power, Michael Martin, James Human, thank you both, uh, all three of you very much for coming in and being part of our forum today. Best of luck to you in the upcoming election. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, by the way, the person that was referred to there, Ryan Hammond, that Michael uh, Martin mentioned earlier, uh, could not attend uh, due to work obligations. We will have uh, an interview with him on our program at some point before 
uh, the May 14 election. Uh, coming up in the next segment,